Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back with a quick little video of my thoughts on the latest news of today. I'm sure many of you heard that it was recently announced that Microsoft is going to buy Activision Blizzard for nearly $70 billion. That is insanity. Now, while most of the news is focusing on the fact that Microsoft will now own some of the biggest gaming franchises in the world, including Overwatch, Diablo, Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush, Starcraft, and just a ton more, but several people have been messaging me going, hey dude, doesn't this also mean that Microsoft will now own all of those classic Sierra Online game properties? And I think that they will, actually. I think it's just gonna be pretty wild. And I have to say, I'm cautiously optimistic here. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, well, basically when Sierra Online at the end of the 90s and the early 2000s collapsed from corruption, it got passed around from several different very large publishers and software houses. And it ended up at a company called Vivendi. And I believe in 2008, Vivendi merged with Activision. And so essentially Activision has held the, the right to all of those classic Sierra properties that you and I know and love. Uh, of the King's Quest, the Lee Suit Larry's, Quest for Glories, Gabriel Knight, all of that sort of stuff, and just literally hundreds more. But in general, Activision really hasn't done much with it. I mean, they basically held on to them and they did reboot the King's Quest series, which was I thought was pretty cool, actually. And they also did a remaster, they allowed a remaster of uh, the original Gabriel Knight, which is pretty cool. Not a lot of people paid attention to that, I think. But uh, for the most part, actually, Activision really hasn't created very many new games with those properties. Although now that I think about it, they did do a couple really weird Lazy Suit Larry games, but it's important to know that those are made without the involvement of the original creator, Al Lowe. Now, one of the things that I, I do have to give Activision credit for is that they made those Sierra games accessible to sites like GOG.com. So if you're not familiar with this, for several years now, you could go and buy uh, essentially digital DRM-free versions of a lot of those classic Sierra games, especially the adventure games, on GOG.com. And as you see right here, you'll see that they were owned by Activision, which is so weird to me, uh, being an ex-employee of Sierra to see Activision there, because for, you know, while I was working there, Activision was a competitor. But again, at least Activision made these games available so that people could legitimately go out there and buy them and often get them to run on modern versions of, you know, modern operating systems, modern computers. And so they weren't completely dead, but they weren't exactly doing much in the way of something new with a lot of this stuff. So what do I think about the fact that Microsoft is now going to own all of those old classic Sierra gaming franchises? Well, I think for the most part, I am optimistic about this for several reasons. The first one being, for those of you that don't know, well, Sierra, when I worked there, the headquarters was in Bellevue, Washington. Well. Redmond, Washington is literally just, I think, five miles down the road. And so Sierra and Microsoft back in the day did have a working relationship. It was very strong. And the reason why that's kind of important is because when Sierra collapsed, a lot of those employees ended up going to Microsoft. And many of them are still there today. Actually, a lot of Sierra employees went to Microsoft. They went to Valve. They went to Nintendo, which are all within probably like, say, a 10 mile radius of each other. So it's really cool that Microsoft, whether they know it or not, whether they think about it or not, they have employees there with the Sierra DNA, which is pretty cool. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that even some of the producers and developers that don't work at Microsoft, well, they often still have some of the original assets in their house, like Al Lowe. Al Lowe, I think, lives only like, I don't know, two or three miles from Microsoft headquarters. And as you see, he has the original source code for so many of those Sierra games. Now, a couple years ago when he wanted to sell it, uh, Activision stopped him. Then he wanted to donate it to, to Activision. They didn't seem very interested. 
Maybe now that Microsoft has a hold on those and he's just down the road, maybe they can work with the guy. Maybe they can bring Allo back and create a proper Laser Suit Larry game. Wouldn't that be amazing? The guy is still passionate about it. Why not reach out to him? And not just him, but so many others in the area. Hell, I mean, even Ken and Roberta Williams still live in the Seattle area. And the other thing to think about, with the resurgence of retro gaming in, say, the last 10 years or so, a lot of older gamers like myself and perhaps you fondly remember some of these gaming franchises and wouldn't mind a developer taking a crack at bringing some of these back, maybe in a new way to a new audience. And I think there's a lot of potential here. I mean, just imagine if they did another Phantasmagoria game or... Heck, bring back the Tribes series. That would be amazing, right? Also, Space Quest and another favorite of mine that I'd love to see. I don't know if it's possible or not, but wouldn't it be cool to get another No One Lives Forever? So many potential ideas here. Obviously, I'm going to keep my expectations in check because, you know, obviously Microsoft paid a lot for this. They're going to focus on the big popular franchises that people know and love. But... It is a pretty cool possibility. And then the other thing I wanna to mention too, very briefly, is that everyone that I know that works there, well, they love working at Microsoft. Now, you do work really hard there, that's what I hear. I've never worked there myself, but uh, everyone that I know that has worked there has worked there for many years, sometimes a couple decades. So it does seem like it is a good place to work. So that's my take on the latest news of Microsoft buying Activision. And as you can see, while that's an interesting idea, I'm much more excited and intrigued by the idea that they will now also own all of those classic Sierra game franchises. And time will tell what they'll do with that. I am cautiously optimistic that they won't just let them die on the vine. Hopefully they will take the reins and keep them alive for many, many generations. Uh, time will tell. But anyways, guys, I would love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What classic Sierra game franchises would you like to see Microsoft bring back now that they own them and could potentially bring them to Game Pass? So much potential there. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.